If you own a Jumper T16, then today is a really big freaking day for you because OpenTX has finally released firmware that fully supports the Jumper T16. This is a big deal because until now, you've had to rely on Jumper to put out firmware updates and Jumper has done a good job with it, but I think we all just feel better when we're sort of in the OpenTX family and OpenTX is, yeah, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. We're going to put OpenTX 233 on our Jumper T16. Let's do it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go to OpenTX.org. There's a link to all of the websites that I reference down in the video description so you can find them really easily. We're going to go to OpenTX.org and we are going to download OpenTX Companion. And here we go. I'm going to download the Windows installer because I'm running Windows. You could download the Mac OS or Linux installer as well. And I'm going to run OpenTX Companion 2.3. The next thing I want you to do is hit Settings radio profiles and you can see on mine i've got two different radio profiles one for my tyrannus x9d and one for my jumper t16 if you only have one radio then you're only going to have one radio profile if you have more than one open tx radio you're going to have one profile for each radio now this jumper t16 i've already set it up i want to show you how to set yours up like mine so you're going to click on this yours might yours might probably doesn't say jumper t16 it might say just default or whatever but you're going to click on that profile and you're going to hit settings, settings, and you can name the radio. Like I'm going to name mine Jumper T16. It's very important that you set the radio type. And it's going to be Jumper T16, T16 Plus, and T16 Pro. If you set the wrong radio type, then OpenTX Companion will download the wrong firmware. And when you flash your radio, you'll get QX7 firmware on a Jumper T16 and it won't work. And probably won't break anything. It just will stop working. Next, I'm going to enable the no heli option. If you fly collective pitch helicopters, leave this option off. Don't enable no heli. There's a screen in OpenTX that relates to the swash plate settings for collective pitch helicopters. And if you choose no heli, that screen goes away. Most multi-rotor pilots aren't going to need this. You'll enable the no heli option. You're going to need to enable the internal multi option if you have an internal multi-protocol module. In other words, if your ra radio has the antenna coming out the top like this, that's the internal multi-protocol module. You need to enable this option. If you have the 4-in-1 uh, module in the back, like here where my crossfire is, you will leave internal multi off. You're going to enable Lua because you want to use Lua scripts. Trust me, just enable that. <laughs> and if you're in the European Union and you want to obey the law, enable the EU option. This will disable D8 protocol support. And if you're using R9, it also changes some of the ways R9 works to be compliant with the laws in your area. If you want to break the law, just leave this off. That is a decision you have to make for you. Struggle with your conscience, people. <laughs> now, there's a couple of additional steps I'm going to walk you through that are not essential, but I think they're nice to do. And one of them is I'm going to create a folder on my hard drive for my SD card backups and for backups of my radio. This is most helpful if you have multiple radios. And I'm going to choose for the SD card folder. I've got a folder here on my OneDrive. It's called Tyrannus Backups. I should really just name it OpenTX Backups since I don't have a Tyrannus. Okay, OpenTX Backups. And it's going to be T16 Backups and SD card. And for the backup folder, it's going to be the same folder, just T16 backups. So there we go. Now I've got a folder for my backups and for my uh, firmware files and so forth. Now the default channel order for OpenTX is RETA, but the default channel order for Betaflight is AETR. So if you want to save yourself a step when you're building new quads, go ahead and change this default channel order from RETA to AETR, and then Betaflight and the radio should match. I also like to enable append version number to firmware file name, and the reason for that is that when we download these bin files, it's just going to be named OpenTX Jumper T16.bin, but I don't know which version of OpenTX it is, and I find that helpful to enable this. So having done all that, I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to hit File, Download, and I'm going to download firmware. 
and it's going to download the firmware file and ask me where I want to put it. And I'm going to go ahead and stick that in OneDrive, my OpenTX backups folder. You can, it's going to just put it anywhere. Put it on your desktop. I don't care. And we're going to need to hit download SD contents. You need to update the SD card contents when you change versions of OpenTX. It's usually the case that nothing has changed, but it's a good idea to download the new SD card contents anyway, just to be safe. So I'm going to get, I guess I'm going to get version 0025. We'll download that. Now, at this point, you're going to flash the firmware to the radio. And when you do this, it is going to erase all of your current models and settings. So what I would like to tell you to do is to connect, don't do this, to connect the radio to USB and do read models and settings from radio. And I've done this in the past. In fact, I have this file, which was pulled off of my Jumper T16. And when I try to open it, it gives me a warning. It says, hey, be careful, but you can see I'm able to open it and I'm able to access my models. I just tried to walk you through this process and when I did it, I got an error message from Companion and then when I unplugged USB, my radio had been completely wiped. So it seems like what you need to do at this point is if you've got any complicated mixes or any complicated setups, you're going to need to like take a screenshot with your phone cam or something and document those because reading them in companion isn't working, at least for me. So after you have one way or another backed up your radio settings, we're gonna flash the radio. We're gonna do this by turning the radio off. And with the radio off, we are gonna plug in USB. When you plug in USB with the radio off, it puts the radio into what's called bootloader mode, and that lets us flash the radio. You may have flashed the radio in the past by putting the firmware on the SD card. That also works, but this is better because it updates both the bootloader and the firmware at the same time, and suffice it to say, that's a good thing. Having plugged the radio in, I'm going to hit read write and write firmware to radio. It should autofill the last firmware you downloaded. However, if you don't have the right firmware here, you'll hit load and you'll go find that firmware that you downloaded. And we're going to hit write to TX. Now at this point, hopefully, here, let me enable show details. Hopefully you see a screen like this with a percentage bar that's filling up and your radio is being flashed. If you don't see that, if you get some kind of an error message, one thing to do is to download the Impulse RC Driver Fixer program. This program is usually used when you're flashing flight controllers, but it turns out that the, the, the radio has the exact same kind of processor in it that your flight controller does, and the driver fixer works on this too. So there's a link to the driver fixer down in the video description, and maybe that will help you. You run the driver fixer, you plug the radio in with the power off, and it fixes your driver, and then sometimes that helps. But see, everything seems to be going well here. While we're flashing, the other error message that people commonly get is multiple DFU devices found or too many DFU devices found. And if you get that, unplug the radio from the USB hub if you're using one, plug it directly into the USB on the laptop or the PC, try a different USB port, and as a last resort, unplug anything. Like if you've got a, a mouse or something plugged in that also has the same kind of processor in it, it can confuse the program and it doesn't know which device you want to flash. So if you get multiple DFU devices found, that's the workaround for that. Hopefully though, everything goes smoothly and the flash finishes like this. When you get to the end of the flash, you will see this warning, no valid DFU suffix signature file has no DFU suffix. Ignore that. It doesn't mean anything. At this point, we can unplug USB and we need to update our SD card contents. Now, you can update the SD card through the USB port on the radio, but it is slow as hell. So what I like to do is just take the USB card out and use the USB card reader, which is much, much faster. Now, I don't have anything customized or anything special on my USB card, so I'm just going to delete everything on the card. If you have custom sound files, perhaps, or if you've got custom model images, you're going to want to back them up. Just copy them off the card to somewhere on your desktop, and you're going to put them back on the new card after 
we update the contents. But you definitely want to wipe this card clean. Don't just drag and drop the new contents on top of the old contents. It will not work correctly. So having, I'm going to delete everything off the card after I've backed up anything custom. A couple other things you might want to remember to back up are if you have any custom splash screen images, background images, or if like you have a receiver firmware that you flash regularly, like if you use R9, check your firmwares folder for any firmwares you want to save. Now that the SD card is completely empty, I'm going to go to my downloads folder where that zip file I downloaded earlier I'm going to open up that zip file and I'm just going to drag all of the stuff over to the Tyrannus SD card. Now the SD card has updated information. I want to take you through a couple more steps before you go rebuild your models and get your radio set up from scratch, hopefully for the very, very last time. I'm going to go ahead and install the SD card back into the T16. I'm going to go ahead and plug back in the USB because there's a couple more things I want to show you how to do. Uh, one is to install the Betaflight Lua script, and also I have a particular sound pack that I like to use. Again, I'm going to select USB storage here, and we're going to get those SD card uh, folders to pop up. So I want you to go to this website. Again, link in the video description to make it easy for you, and we're going to download the Betaflight Lua script. If you don't run Betaflight, then you are not going to download these Lua scripts. You'll download a different Lua script, but most of my viewers are using Betaflight. And right in here, we're going to go into the obj folder until we see sounds, scripts, and bf. Here is the T16 SD card. I'm going to take the sound, scripts, and bf right here. And over here, I've got the main, uh, the main folder of the SD card in which I can also see sounds, scripts, and no bf. And I'm just going to drag this right over there, and it will copy those things over. The next thing I'm going to do is download the Amber sound pack. Uh, I think it's a voice pack, and I think the Amber voice sounds a lot nicer than the factory voice. Maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't, but you can download the Amber sound pack. I couldn't find it anywhere with Google searching or anything. I had to go back to my own freaking video to find the link to the Amber sound pack. It's right here, and it's in the video description below. And what we're going to do... Is. Hey Joshua from the Huge here. Don't do just drag the sounds folder onto your SD card. Don't do what? Do you, why does he always make it so complicated? Just don't do any of this. Just in the amber.rar file, just take the sounds folder and drag it over to your SD card and drop it and overwrite the files. It's easy. Don't. What are you doing, Joshua? En dot old. Just drag it to sounds file. Drag and drop it onto your SD card. At this point, you have OpenTX233 on your radio, and the next thing you got to do is basically set it all up again from scratch. But it's going to be a little easier because this time you can use OpenTX Companion to do it. So, for example, if I go uh, read models and settings from radio, now we've got Model 01 here, and instead of twiddling around on the on the screen with the with the knobs and stuff of the radio, we can just open this model up. And for example, we can go to the mixer screen and we can we can do it all with the mouse and keyboard, which it'll take a minute to get for you to get familiar with it. But everything that you're used to seeing on the screen of the radio is here. It's just a little easier to access. And you have the ability to do things like copy paste between models. So if you have multiple models, it's just a lot easier to go through. And in fact, you know what I ought to do is I've already got a video that takes you through setting up your your model in the radio using the buttons and knobs on the radio itself. And if you're in a hurry to get your radio set up right now, go ahead and watch that video. It's linked in the video description. It, it's part of my whole playlist of Jumper T16 videos. Uh, but what I want to do is I'm going to make a video where I set up the model in, using OpenTX Companion instead of using the knobs. And it's a, a lot easier to do when you have a mouse and keyboard. But that's going to be it for a future date. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that now that the pain of the upgrade and the pain of setting up all your models from scratch, ouch, I hope that once that's passed, you're going to find that OpenTX is a lot easier to use uh, with access to the companion as opposed to doing it on screen. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching it. I hope it's been super helpful and happy flying.